book of Mark chapter 3 and verse 13. Mark chapter 3 and verse 13. That's where the text will be coming from. Good to see all the superheroes here in the building. Mark 3 and 13. It's on the screen. Let's read. And he went on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Berenerges, that is, the sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And they went in the house. My text is going to come from verse 14. Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. And to have power to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. And I'm going to title this message, There's a Superhero in You. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to have this earthly Father's Day, which is simply a reminder of the great Father that you are to each and every one of us. Father God, I thank you, Lord for how you have governed our lives. And I thank you, Lord, for how you have shaped every man that's here in this place that's a father to be who you have called him to be. And Father God, we thank you for your word. I pray, Lord God, that it will accomplish that which it was sent to do. Open up our eyes, our heart, to hear what your spirit is saying and to see what your word is saying. I step aside as pastor so that you may step forward and get the glory in all that I say and do. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, and amen, you all may be seated. There is a superhero in you. Saturday mornings, growing up, I was a big superhero fan. I would long for the Saturday mornings because it would afford me the ability to see the Justice League. It would afford me the ability to see my favorite superheroes. I love seeing Superman. Anybody love Superman? Love to see Batman. Any Batman fans in here? Yeah, yeah. I would love to see Flash, X-Men, the Avengers, all those superheroes. Because it was just the kid in me. But one of the things I loved about the superheroes was that in order for them to be at their best, because all of them, even though they had superpowers, they also had weaknesses. For them to be their best, they had to come together for the greater good of all mankind. And in spite of every one of their weaknesses, when they came together, they became better, and they were able to overcome the obstacles and the enemy that they faced in their life. I believe God is saying the same thing in the life of, of every man, of every father that's here in this place. On the inside of each and every one of us, there is a superhero. And I believe God is speaking to the hearts of men today to understand that, yes, you have a superpower and you have some great strength. But even in, in the power that he's given you, you still have some form of weakness. But when we come together as fathers and when we come together as men, we can do greater things for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we are better together than we are apart. Amen. Amen. So there is a superhero in you. Here in this text, we can see where Jesus 
Scripture says he began to call the disciples or the apostles together. He began to build, quote unquote, his justice league. He began to build his avenging team that will one day come together and revolutionize this world. Literally, these apostles, these disciples that Jesus would hand select would be able to turn this world upside down, headed toward heaven so that God can get the glory out of men's lives. And one of the great things that I love about this text is that it is a reflection of how uh, in the comic in the comic book world where Superman will come together with Batman and Batman will come together with the Flash and they will come together and they will form this super team so that they can fulfill the super mission and super assignment that God that 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 they had upon their life. Likewise, God is saying the same thing. He needs us as men to come together to form a dream team, to form a Justice League or an Avengers team so that we can fulfill the main mission and assignment that he has upon our life as well. So here's what Jesus did. He began to assemble all kind of men. He assembled Peter, he assembled James, and he assembled John and some of the other boys. But one of the things I come to understand about the text is that every one of those boys had some weaknesses. Every one of them had some flaws. They weren't necessarily the best. But God has a way of bringing out the best in every man. And God is saying the same thing to each and every one of us in here that's men. Although you might have your weaknesses and your struggles and the things you're dealing with, when you hook up with Jesus, he could turn you from a hero into a superhero for his glory. Yes, this is good. This is good. And my thought is this. Get this. Every man can be a hero. But with Jesus, he's the only one that can make you a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not talking about just being a regular man because it's easy to be a regular man. But I'm talking about being a superman. I'm talking about being a superhero. And Jesus is the only one that can put the super on your natural that will give you the ability to do supernatural things. And some of y'all have gotten caught up into just being a regular man, but God never said that he wanted you to be just a regular man. But he wants you to understand that there is a superhero on the inside of you. And if you stay connected with Jesus, he'll turn your weaknesses into strengths and help you be the man that you need to be for him. So Jesus, when I look at it, Jesus, he can put the super on your natural to allow you to do supernatural things. When I looked at the superheroes, I I would love watching Superman because he was a man of great strength. He was a man that was faster than a, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was faster than a speeding bully. He was, uh, I think, stronger than a locomotive or whatever it was. Say Say it again. Faster than a locomotive. But one of the things I love about Superman is that He did super things, and he had the strength to fly. And I remember as a kid, I would go up on the sliding board, and I'd get to the top, and instead of sliding down, I'd put on my cape and jump off and fly. Yeah. I, I hit the ground. <laughs> but you get the point. These superheroes allow me to see something that I would one day long to be and do and get outside of who I was so that I can try to be something a little bit better. Likewise, when you get Jesus, He'll let you put on your cape. He'll let you jump. And you might even fly. Because when you hook up with Jesus, you'll turn from a hero into a superhero and be able to do supernatural things. Yeah. He'll put the super on your natural as a man where you might not fully understand finances. 
but God will endow you with the spirit of supernatural wisdom and he'll allow you to navigate and govern and lead your family over into green pastures. You might not have the greatest acumen or you might not even have the ability to uh, pass successfully through high school, but God can put the soup on your natural and give you the spirit of entrepreneurship and allow you to not just work in a business, but be your business. And don't trip with me because that's the very thing Jesus did. When Jesus showed up to Peter, he said, Peter, you're a fisher. You're a fisherman. But if you allow me to put my super on your natural, I'm not just going to make you a fisherman. I'm going to make you a what? Fisher of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you hook up with Jesus, Jesus got a way of putting a su his super on your natural. And he'll give you the ability to do supernatural things. Mark 3 and 13 says it like this. And he went up on the mountain and he called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. I love this text because the first thing that I see in it is that Jesus chose those he wanted. Yeah, you just didn't come to Jesus because you wanted to. No, Jesus called you to himself. He called you to himself because he had a plan and he had a purpose and assignment for your life and many of y'all y'all got to understand that as men God has called you unto himself because he has a work for you to do he has a special assignment that only you as a superhero can do but you got to be willing to obey his call and obey his voice and, and the scripture begins to show me that because he loved them he called them to himself and my thought is this you got to know that you are valuable if Jesus called you you got to know that there's something special about who you are if Jesus called you because he doesn't call anything that he does not have any need for. But if you are a man and if you are a father and if he has called you to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, it is a sign that you are valuable in his sight. So don't let nobody, don't even let society tell you you're, you are less than because if God called you, he understands that there is value in who you are. So let me keep it real. Value past your mistakes. Value past your addictions. Value past your struggles. Value past some of your regrets. In other words, God says, I got need for you in such a way to where even though you made mistakes, I still got a plan and a purpose for your life. And Jesus assembled these 12 knowing that they had imperfections because he knew that there was still a superhero on the inside of them. And my thought is this. If Jesus needs you, he knew this world needed you too. Yeah, yeah. This will help get rid of the thought that you can't get up because you're a black man. This will help get rid of the thought that you can't get up because of the demographic that you was raised in. This will help you get past the limitations in your mind to where you feel like you can't rise up because you didn't make it past high school or you don't have a college degree. But can I say Jesus, because he understood that there was something valuable on the inside of you, he wants you to know that this world needs you too. So you need to open up your mind and get past the limitations you have because when you hook up with Jesus, he'll allow you to bust through every barrier that you will face in your life because there's greatness on the inside of you. Yeah, yeah. There's greatness on the inside of every father. There's, a great, there's greatness on the inside of every man. There's greatness on the inside of Every young man, don't let society tell you anything differently. There's greatness. And because of that, we can see where John 1 and 12 says this, but as many as received them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on him. So here it is. Jesus used these men. These 12, some of these men, they were fathers. 
with families. Peter, he had a family. He wasn't just a fisherman out there catching fish for himself. No, he was a businessman that had it to, that had to put food on the table for his family. Philip was a father that had a family. And not only were these men fathers, but they were also business owners. I want you to see that. Yeah, they were business owners. Peter ran his own business. And my thought is, if society won't help you come up, you got the ability and the anointing to come up yourself. You can get you a lawnmower. You can get you a weed eater. You can get you some gas. And now you got your own lawn business. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can cook you some chicken. Because I know some brothers that could cook some chicken with the best of them. You can cook you some ribs. Yeah, yeah, you can barbecue you some some baked beans and some potato salad. And now you got a barbecue business. You got to see this. God has this way of allowing his super to be put on your natural. And although your natural may have its limitations, when you hook up with the super, it'll allow you to do things that you can't do in your own strength. And God is showing every man that's up in here to let them know that you don't have to wait to get a paycheck. You can become your own paycheck. I hear you, JC. I am a business. You don't have to work for a business. You are a business. And Jesus understood this when he assembled his superheroes, his dream team. Matthew 16 and 24 says it like this. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him, get this, deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Yeah, if you want Jesus to put his super on your natural, these are three things you must do. Number one, you got to deny yourself. Yeah, you got to deny yourself. In other words, you got to get past yourself. You got to get past the things that you want to do for the glory of God and say, God, I'm I'm going to push aside my agenda for your agenda. What will happen? You'll push away the natural and hook up with the supernatural. Number two, he says, not only should you deny yourself, you got to take up your cross. Yeah, you got to be willing to pick up your own cross. You got to carry those things that, that, are, that are heavy. You got to carry those things that are weighty. And you got to follow God with them. Say that one more time. You got to carry those things that are heavy, those things that are weighty. And you got to follow him with them. Why? Because God is still touched with the feelings of your infirmities, touched with the feelings of your weaknesses. And just because it's a weakness to you, it becomes a strength to God. And it'll help keep you humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number three, you got to follow him. You want to achieve superhero status, you got to follow him. You can't follow the things of this world. You can't follow the things that you want to do, but you got to hook up with the greatest superhero of all times, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And he'll make you to be the man that you need to be. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Yeah. And I want you to get this. Because it's never said in scripture. That you have to be perfect. Because God doesn't need perfect men. He need purposeful men. He tells us, be ye perfect, for I am perfect, yes. But he understands that we will never be perfect because there's only one perfect man that has walked this earth, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But what every man can be is purposeful. In other words, you're living a purpose-filled life. So as a man and as a father, I want you to understand that 
even though you don't have the perfect life, you can still live a purposeful life where God can bring forth fruit out of your life and it can remain. And God, he can still use you in spite of every one of your weaknesses. And this is why I love the whole superheroes thing, because it lets me know that even though I got great strength, it is my weaknesses that God can use for his glory. And even though I might not be perfect, I can still be purposeful and fulfill the mission, plan, and purpose that he has for my life. So purposeful men, they understand that God's purpose for their life, get this, supersedes perfection. Let me slow it down because truth be told, you'll kill yourself trying to be perfect. As a matter of fact, you'll stop your own progress trying to be perfect. But God says, as a man of God, I want you to be purposeful. There's something you can do for my glory. There's something only you can do that I have put on the inside of you that will allow you to be the best man that you can be. So God is speaking to every man that's here in this place. He's saying, get into purpose. You might not be able to get into perfectionism, but you can get into purpose. You can serve me. You can love me. You can praise me. You can give your all unto me. Why? Because when you do that, you have stepped over from perfectionism into purposeful living life. There is a purpose on the inside of you. Don't let people tell you you can't be who God called you to be. God just wants you to walk in purpose. For he has the plans for our life, plans to give us a hope and a future. But you got to be willing to be a purposeful man and not a perfectionist. So as I close, I want to look at Mark 3 and 14. It says this. Then he appointed 12. That they might be with him and that they might send them that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal the sick and cast out demons. Jesus understood that it was more important for men to be purposeful than to walk into perfectionism. I want you to see this. He brought them together. Peter, he will cuss you out. Peter, he would deny you. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, Peter, he will, he'll say you out. Yeah. But God used him. James and John, the sons of thunder, were in Jesus' immediate circle. It was the Peter, it was the James, it was the John. But yet James and John, they had this power struggle, power tripping. Who going to sit on the right hand of the Father? They were power tripping. But yet God still used them. He will use the Matthew. He will use Downton Thomas. The one that won't quite fully believe in who you have called, who you are called to be. But God still used him. Judas. Yeah. Judas. He was a man that sure couldn't walk in the perfectionism. But get this. Even Judas, the son of perdition, had a purpose. His purpose was to push Jesus over to the cross. And I've said all of this to say this. That even though you got your imperfection. God has still called you to be the church. He has still called you to be the father. He has still called you to be the man. 
And if God was able to use Peter, James, John, Thomas, and Judas, he can use you too. Yes, you might still drink every now and then. Yes, you might still roll. Yes, you might still chew. Yes, you might still hang out with those that do. But God can still use you. It's a superhero on the inside of you. It's something great on the inside of you. And just because you don't see it, Jesus stood up and he called the 12 to himself and said, even though you can't see it, I see that there's something powerful on the inside of you. And God is saying the same thing to every man. There's something special on the inside of you. Stop discounting yourself. You can pray effectual fervent prayers. You can praise with the best of them, just like David, even if you got the praise till your clothes fall off. Yes, you can worship till you pass out. Yes, you can serve me with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes, you can lead your family in the green pastures. You don't need a high school diploma to do that. You don't need a college degree to do that. You just need the spirit of God resting on your life that will allow you to do supernatural things. He'll give you spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge, spiritual insight to push you past your contemporaries that have settled into just being heroes. But God has called you to not just be that hero, but to be that superhero. Yeah, you got some superpowers. Yeah, let's look at these powers. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at these superpowers. Here's all the superpowers for the saints. Yeah, God has given you the gift of wisdom. Yeah, it's a superpower. Well, God will give you the wisdom to make the best decision in the circumstance and the situation that you're in. God will give you the gift of knowledge. In other words, he'll give you inside or secrets as to what's going on in your life and even in your family member's life. Yes, God will give you the gift of faith. In other words, he'll give you this faith, Lord, that that don't make no sense. He'll give you the faith to trust him when other people can't trust him and when other people can't see him. God will give you the gift of faith. That's a superpower that's on the inside of us as men. God will give you the gift of healing, gift of miracles, prophecy, even discerning of spirits. In other words, God will put something on the inside of you and gives you the ability to discern what's good and what's evil. Not just for you, but for your family. In other words, God will give you the moral compass that he has put on the inside of you so that right can still be right and wrong can still be wrong. And you can call it like you see it. Like my grandma used to say, you can call it like an I-S. Yeah. It's a superpower. Bring it back up. He'll give you the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues where you can speak in tongues. It'll be your heavenly prayer language. You can bring it down. And although you don't know what to say in English, you can say it in the spirit. And God can understand every word. Because truth be told, as a man, some things that we we don't want to talk about, some things we don't want to, Say something to our wife that we're dealing with. But God has given us a language of power on the inside of us to where we could talk to Father God. And when we talk to God, God can make everything right. It's a superpower. We got to be willing to use these super gifts that God has on the inside of us. And God has also given us that superpower of administration. In other words, he's given us the ability to organize things, put things in its proper perspective and put things in its proper place because we serve a father that loves to have things decently and in order. And as a father, you got the ability to call things back into order. Yes, people ain't going to like what you say. Yes, your children might be tripping out. Yes, they might not agree with what you say, but when you speak the word, hallelujah, when you speak the word, The word will stand for itself and the word, it will back up every word that you say. But you got to be a man that's strong enough to use that superpower. Don't be ashamed. Don't be one of these passive men that let things just come in and out of your house. No, no, no. It's a superhero on the inside of you. 
God called you to be the man. Take your throne. Take your rightful place and be the man that God called you to be. Because there's a superhero in you. I'm out of time. Let me close with this. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4 says this. There are different kinds of gifts, but it is, it is the same Holy Spirit who gives them. There are different kinds of works to be done for him, but the work is for the same Lord. There are different ways of doing his work, but it is the same God who uses all these ways in all people. The Holy Spirit works in each person in one way or another. Get this. For the good of all. Woo, this is good because it's just a reminder that God has given you that superpower. For the good of all. It's the reason why he has called you to be the man of God that you are. For the good of all. It's the reason why you got the assignment on your life for the good of all. It's the reason why God chose you to be the man and not the woman for the good of all. Yes, it's the reason why you put on your pants a certain way. It's the reason why you got different equipment than the other for the good. Uh, I'm saying it a certain way, yeah, because just because you call yourself a man, that don't mean you're a man. Only God can make you a man for the good. Yeah, yeah, for the good of all. It's for the good of all. And just as Jesus called all of the disciples to himself, Superman will come together with Batman. Batman will come together with the Flash. Flash will come together with Wonder Woman and Aquaman, and they will form the Justice League. For my Marvel fans, yeah, yeah, for my Marvel fans, you would have you would have Spider Man, you would have Thor, you would have Captain America, and they will come together and form the Avengers. But one thing that I came to understand is that when those teams came together, you couldn't stop them. As long as they remain individual, you can pick them off. Why? Because all of them, although they had great strength, they had great weaknesses. Superman, his weakness was kryptonite. Batman, he was a superhero because he had the money. He had them racks on racks. <laughs> no, not, 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 yeah. But he was still a man. It was his weakness. Aquaman, he could swim in the water. But he couldn't stay out the water forever. But when they came together, the strengths of others covered the weaknesses of others. And they became an unstoppable team. Why? Because they were better together. And God is saying the same thing to each and every one of us as men. We better together. Yes, we got weaknesses. Yes, we got things that we can't do. Yes, we got inadequacies. Yes, we got imperfections. But when we come together... We can't be stopped, and we can do some things for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Come on, let's give God some praise.